What's up, friend? Welcome back to my channel. Y'all, we have made it to the end of 2023. This is my last video of the year, and I thought, you know what? Let's go out with a bang. I feel like we have all collectively decided that 2024 is gonna be our glow up year. I feel like 2023 was indeed the year of realizing things, you know, putting in the work, putting in the prep. And 2024 is gonna be when we put everything that we learned into action and just live our best life. But none of that is gonna happen if we still have fear coursing through our veins and we have no idea how to cope with it. Okay, we've gotta let go of our fears and in the words of the format, step out of the desert and into the sun. I don't know why I quote things so much. Anyway, let's talk about three fears that we've had in 2023 that have really been holding us back and how we can get over them in 2024 to accomplish our goals, manifest our dream lives, and just thrive. We're gonna thrive. And I'm gonna put this video on whenever I start to spiral a little bit, okay? This is as much for me as it is for you, trust me. So let's just get into it. Raise your hand if you are a former gifted kid. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, allow me to explain. I feel like a lot of us, and I'm talking about millennials here, we grew up in the gifted kid era. That means that our parents were constantly telling us about how amazing and smart we were, and straight A's were the expectation, and if you got anything below an A, it was like, oh, something must be going on. Everything you tried, your parents, your teachers, your coaches, they all said that you were amazing. I got a soccer trophy every year, and all I did was stand there and then run away when the ball got too close. Anyway, as a result, of this, when you get a little bit older and your parents aren't there to constantly tell you how great you are, you have a rude awakening when you realize that you're actually not as special and amazing as you thought you were. My rude awakening is when I went to college. Now I went to UCLA and I absolutely loved it. UCLA is an amazing school. Everyone there is smart. Everyone there is intelligent. Everyone there works hard. You are not special. Like if you go to UCLA, everyone else is special too. So it just diminishes your own specialness and that hurts. So when I was in college, I would turn in a paper that I had spent like three hours on. I thought it was amazing because I'm good at everything, whatever, I don't need to spend time on it. And then I would get a B minus or something and spiral because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, I thought I was good at this. I thought I could just put something out there and automatically get an A. I realize how delusional that sounds now, but at the time it was really scary. <laughs> there was this point where I tried to take up knitting and I was obviously bad at it because it's a new hobby and you have to learn and practice. And after a few failed blankets, I was like, you know what? I am done with knitting, fuck this, whatever. And my boyfriend at the time, this wasn't Will, was like, why do you always quit when you're not immediately good at things? I was like, ooh. He really snapped with that one. The truth is that there are gonna be some things, of course, that you have a natural affinity for, but for the most part, you're not gonna be good at anything right off the bat. Oh my God, it got really dark in here. Can you see me? Hold on, how was that? The same? Okay, great. Back to the point. I was tricked into thinking that I was naturally gonna be good at anything because that is what I had been told growing up. But the truth is that I was just like everyone else and I live in the real world and in the real world, everyone has to try and practice in order to get better at things. And since I've learned that lesson, there have been so many things in these past few years that I have dived into knowing that I would be really bad at them right off the bat and just need to take that time to practice and learn and grow. And let me tell you, getting past that initial, oh, screw this, this is too hard kind of thing has made my life really explode in a good way. Moving past that screw it moment has been necessary for a lot of good things to transpire in my life. Let me tell you all this, even though it's a little embarrassing, I got rejections for eight months straight before I booked my first modeling job. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh yeah, for every 15 auditions, you should book two things. No, eight months. But once I booked that first job, I really decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to dedicate some more time to learning. I'm gonna take what I learned from this job and apply it to my future auditions. And what do you know, I started booking more. But imagine if I had quit after three months of hearing no, or six months of hearing no, or eight months of hearing no over and over again. If you're a content creator, you're gonna send 50 emails to brands pitching yourself and hear back from two. In fact, that is very good. Good job if that ratio is a reality for you. When you're applying to jobs, you're gonna submit your resume to a hundred different places and get five interviews. Sometimes that's just how it is. And just because it's hard, doesn't mean that it's not worth doing because eventually you are gonna get your dream job. It is gonna work out. You are gonna get that reply. You are gonna book that job. Something's gotta give. But nothing's gonna give if you give up before it starts giving. <laughs> Period. Do not be afraid to fail. Do not be afraid to rise above the learning curve because on top of that learning curve is your happiness, your success, 
your fulfillment, and all the things that you've been manifesting. Manifesting isn't just writing in a journal and wishing, okay? You gotta put in the work. You have to actually try. It requires being really bad at stuff at first. It requires improving because you're always gonna have to lift your energy to match the energy of your manifestation. So it's okay to be bad at things at first, okay? You're gonna get better eventually. The second fear that I want all of us to leave behind in 2023 is the fear of being seen trying. Being bad at something when you first start out is one thing, but being bad publicly? <sighs> It's a lot. I think the best example of this is being a content creator, right? Being an influencer. Back in the day, if you wanted to be an actor, for example, the only people who really saw you trying were casting directors and your agent if you had one. But if you're trying to be an influencer, everyone is seeing you from day one. And I'm not gonna lie, that shit is moderately embarrassing. Yeah, me linking a product to my 800 followers on Instagram, that's a little embarrassing. And it's not even rough being seen by people you don't know because who cares, you don't know them and also you're barely being seen by anyone you don't know anyway. It's really about being seen by your family, your friends, acquaintances, like that person who was on the same dorm floor as you seeing you post about moisturizer, like, ah, uh, it hurts, it hurts so bad. But SZA truly said it best, your fear of looking stupid is holding you back. Because barring being a Nepo baby or a random situation like that, which I would say is the minority, not the majority, Everyone starts from zero. Your favorite influencer started from zero followers and was probably cringing at themselves, but they kept going. Your favorite actor started by going to castings and being rejected like everybody else. It's hard. It sucks, it's scary, but my solution has always been to live in the end. Meaning, live in the future when trying to make your dreams happen is no longer cringe. Live in the future as if you know that your hard work is going to pay off and eventually you're gonna get where you wanna be. Imagine how much more free you would feel if you knew with 100% certainty that what you were doing was gonna work out. Imagine sitting in your shitty job and being like, oh my God, I hate this job, but knowing in six months, you're gonna get your dream job. Imagine worrying about money, but you know in three months, you're gonna win the lottery. Would you not move differently? In the grand scheme of things, your current reality is a blip in the radar. It is a distant memory. It is a necessary but temporary stepping stone to get you where you need to be. And I know it's hard to accept that when you're living in this current reality 24 seven and it is consuming your thoughts like crazy. But I promise you, if you change your mindset to see it more as that temporary state, as that distant memory, as that thing that you're gonna look back on when you're successful and be like, wow, you know what? I really got through that. It'll change the game. You're gonna start seeing things shift a lot faster and you're gonna get to your manifestation a lot more quickly because you're not gonna be wasting all of your time and energy on worrying about being cringe or worrying about people watching you and seeing you fail or worrying about what your friend from college thinks. You're not gonna be wasting your time worrying about that stuff. You're gonna be worrying about making shit happen. And that is the key. The third fear that I wanna talk about is a little confusing. It feels like it lacks logic, but I promise you it is very real. You're afraid of success. You're afraid of the changes in your life that success will bring. Allow me to explain. When you are so used to your current reality and you're stuck in that cycle, even if you don't like it, changes to that cycle are gonna be a little jarring. I'm used to being broke, but now I'm making a lot of money from my side hustle and I have no idea how to handle it. I'm used to being in my shitty job, but it's familiar to me and now that I have a new job, I'm scared of what my new boss is gonna be like or if I'm gonna like my new office. I've been single for years and I feel really lonely, but I just met someone with the potential to be my partner, but I'm also super nervous about what that entails and the added responsibility of having someone in my life that I care about on that level. You would think that when you're manifesting and you want something really badly that when it finally happens, you would be happy and all of your problems would go away. But that's not always the case. Any kind of change, especially if your manifestation is something really big and life altering, is gonna take some time to get used to. You're gonna have to get used to being perceived. You're gonna have to get used to that feeling that you constantly need to top your own work, right? That perfectionism. And what sucks is that a lot of us will take this fear of success and this fear of having to top yourself or having to get better or having to do new things and self-sabotage to keep us where we currently are. I have definitely done that. But here's what got me out of that loop of wanting something so badly and wanting to manifest it, but then it's starting to happen and then self-sabotaging to keep myself where I was. And I think that this really applies to the other two fears as well, and just fear in general as a concept. The fear of change, the fear of success, the fear of being seen trying, the fear of failing, all of those fears are normal. 
being afraid is very normal. Fear is a part of life. It is an evolutionary trait that human beings developed to live, right? Fear of the unknown kept the Neanderthals from eating that weird plant that looked a little suspicious with the poisonous berries on it, you feel me? Wow, we're really being scientific here. You cannot sit around and wait to stop being afraid because guess what? You will never stop being afraid. It is an integral part of who you are as a human being. Sorry, it got really bright now. Y'all, I keep changing the light because the sun is being weird. The sun is being weird, but I hope that you're sticking with me. Being afraid of success specifically makes a lot of sense, right? Because with success comes more responsibility more work, more dedication, more time, more effort, etc. Anyway, what I think really helps is looking at fear not as a deterrent, but as an opportunity to be courageous. And how do you become courageous? You practice. You're not good at being courageous right off the bat, okay? We are not gifted kids. Anytime you make the choice to push through fear a little bit, to get closer to your true purpose and what you know in your heart is meant for you, you get a little more courageous. The only way to get over or around fear is just to move through it. So what does that look like? When you're trying to be an influencer and one of your TikToks really starts taking off and you start freaking out because you're like, oh my God, so many people are seeing me, it's weird. Make another one. Make another TikTok, make a follow-up. Reply to a comment with a video, pro tip. When your former neighbor sees your YouTube channel and sends it to you and is like, what the hell is this? Tell them confidently, straight up. Oh, that's my YouTube channel. I make videos about X, Y, and Z. I'm glad you found it. I hope you'll subscribe. When fear approaches you and is trying to intimidate you, girl, double down. Double down. Even if it's just a teeny tiny double down, like not deleting a video when it starts taking off and you get a little spooked. Or being honest with a friend about your dream to start your own business, right? Take that step. The more you double down, I promise you, the quieter your fears become. And in 2024, at least for me, I'm all about knocking down those fears a peg or two and keeping it pushing. I think the biggest realization that I've had in 2023 is that the biggest thing holding us back isn't our circumstances or our situation, it's ourselves. Like, let me just speak on behalf of myself. I can be my own worst enemy. And sometimes you have to prove to yourself that you're courageous and you're capable of moving past any fear of failing or being seen or even success. So that's what I'm taking with me into 2024. I hope that you take this in with you too. Be courageous, push past your fears, and just go out there and get it. We've already done the preparation. We've already done the work on ourselves. Now it's time to put it into action and have our best year yet. So happy new year. I'm so excited for everything that is to come. Comment down below. Let me know what you're working on. Let me know what your new year's resolutions are. Let's chat. And if you like this video, I have a whole playlist on manifesting the law of attraction, all kinds of stuff, honestly. So I would love for you to subscribe. Go check out that playlist and I will catch you in my video not next weekend, but the weekend after. I'll catch you next year. Okay, bye.